Space for a lot of people is a kind of blank slate, almost a, an opportunity to achieve great things for humanity in the process of leaving a lot of bad things behind. So if we go to space off the back of the, the, the tenets of, of capitalism, then there's a possibility we're going to pay for that down the line. So over the past, I guess, couple of decades, we've seen the private space sector emerge, and that has meant the role of NASA has changed considerably. It means they're no longer calling the shots. It also means they shift some of the risks, well, a lot of the risks, over to the private companies. And uh, it's obviously been a, a much larger role for private companies in space. So on the face of it, a lot of the, the big names in private space, Elon Musk and, and Jeff Bezos, for example, that they're seen as doing these things as a kind of personal mission, uh, as a, a, a service to humanity almost. But there is a lot of money to be made in space. There's, there's, there are huge industries emerging and there are more industries emerging as well. And, and looking ahead further into the future, we're going to see people going to the moon, for example, to mine resources. That's another way to make money. We're going to see private space stations where there's going to be manufacturing on the space stations. And then if you go way out into the future, we're going to see colonies on either the Moon or Mars, and obviously that's going to create many more industries. But the problem is we don't know the uh, intentions of the next wave of entrepreneurs, the next people that can take us there. If someone were to take a stranglehold on private space, if someone were to, for example, dominate the infrastructure that takes us between here and the Moon, and we'd already shifted all of the economy to the Moon and the industry to the Moon, then that's quickly a monopoly that's someone that has an outrageous amount of power. And we already see that corporations in, in America in particular have, have too much power. Um, that's only going to get worse if you take it to a galactic level. In 1967, the Outer Space Treaty was signed. And one of the major things it stated was that no country can claim sovereignty over any piece of land in, on, on the moon, on Mars, or any planet, or any part of space. When you talk about colonizing space in the future, that outer space treaty is always going to be in the way. Um, it was written quite ambiguously, so there are loopholes that can be exploited. We've already seen America pass a law saying that um, you can go to space and take resources from either the moon or, or another planet and still not own that space, so that gives a little bit of leeway to, to, to do projects on, on other planets on the moon. But I think uh, what we're going to see in the future is, is all these ambitious plans are going to butt heads against this outer space treaty and at some point someone's got to give on, on either side and if you're a betting person you'd probably put it on the people with lots of money rather than a, a decades old space treaty. We are going to go to space, we are going to go to the moon, we are going to go to Mars, it, it's going to happen, enough people want it to happen, the world's richest man wants it to happen. So. What we can do is now pay attention to how it's going to affect us here on Earth and try and manoeuvre conditions in such a way that we benefit to the, to the maximum extent. Hey NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.